Hello and welcome to CMC Markets Trading Outlook for the week of December the 8th, 2014. My name is Colin Sosinski, Chief Market Strategist. Our topic this week is Spotlight on Asia Pacific. Uh, for the first time in quite a while, we've seen so much news come out from North America and Europe that this week between those two regions there's practically nothing. Almost all the major news that's coming out this week is from the Asia Pacific region and we could see a more particular focus on that area, uh, particularly with news from China, Australia, and and New Zealand and, and also Japan coming out throughout the week. So we may see that dominate the trading action. But I'm going to start off with a, uh, a quick review of client sentiment uh, as we finish off the uh, the week with uh, non-farm payrolls came out. Non-farm payrolls in the U.S. were absolutely spectacular, coming in well above 300,000. And what did that really do for indices? Well, it did manage to push U.S. indices to an all-time high to finish the week, particularly the Dow. However, what's even more interesting is the rally that we've seen in the DAX. Even with Germany's economy struggling, hopes and dreams that the ECB will, will finally stop talking and actually start doing something about their balance sheet in January has propelled the DAX also pretty close to or up to an all-time high itself. However, what's interesting here is that if we look at the client sentiment, we'll see that not a lot of people are believing in this rally. If we look here on uh, on Friday, Thursday, we started out with a uh, all clients 43% short. On Friday, there's 73% short. For top clients, we've seen the jump from 26% to 70%. Those are huge, huge increases in short positions against the Germany 30 uh, on Friday. This suggests that people really aren't believing this rally and thinking and wondering what it would take to sustain the rally going forward forward or could it start to slump back? Interestingly enough, when we look at other European indices, particularly the UK, we can see quite a bit of indecision here. We have, in terms of number of clients, clients are very slightly a net long. However, on when we look at where uh, people are putting their money where their mouth is, we actually see that uh, that clients have gone net short on the on the UK 100. And in fact, we've here seen quite a bit of a jump uh, as well in terms of short positions, with the uh, top clients going 42 to 53, and all clients going 34 percent short to 62 percent short. So we are seeing clients shorting into the rally in uh, in Europe heading into the weekend. It hasn't been as much the case in the United States, and I'll bring this uh, up the Dow as a uh, as an example. We've seen uh, actually the other way, it seems as though uh, people are going back the other way, where we've seen the uh, the short position against the Dow, the US 30, actually come down a little bit. Uh, under top clients, it's gone up a little bit, but it's been pretty marginal difference compared to what we've been seeing in Europe today. The uh, indecision isn't just uh, confined to stock markets. Also, if we take a look at gold, gold has had a particularly wild week. It was it was crushed uh, heading, starting into the week. Then it had a massive rally, and it's been bouncing back and forth in and around the 1,200 level throughout the week. So gold has been very volatile. It's it's continued could may continue to be volatile for quite some time. Uh, however, if we look at this here, clients are split on what to do about it. Uh, clients are are long in terms of number of clients. But in terms of position value, uh, clients are actually short, particularly the top clients are actually net short on uh, on gold. Interestingly, though, as uh, as we've seen gold pull back on Friday, the short positions on, against gold have actually come down a little bit, and and this suggests that some people are using this uh, this decline as an opportunity to cover off short positions against gold. Now that being said, gold could uh, could still be dicey over the next little while. Gold historically has been tracking the ECB balance sheet. It isn't going. It hasn't gone anywhere. Even with all the talk of the last six months, the ECB has, balance sheet has been shrinking. If anything, stabilizing at best, and uh, and going into the week of the 8th, European banks are supposed to pay back $14 billion worth of loans, so what's the ECB going to do to, uh, to offset that? It's, uh, it's still pretty early stages, and uh, in terms of the Dow, we're also in in-between, what I almost call a hammock week, where uh, where we've had this huge number of announcements in the first week of the month, with uh, particularly crowning achievement of that incredible non-farm payrolls report. But then we have a week where there's practically nothing except for U.S. retail sales. And then the week after, we have the Fed meeting. And the Fed meeting, I had originally thought, would be pretty uneventful, but it's actually starting to set up to be a particularly significant one. And uh, and there's a number of reasons for that, and I'll go into more detail next week. But for now, what we're starting to see talk in the U out of Fed members in the U.S. is uh, is perhaps that the Fed might start to move away from this considerable time between the end of QE and the start of interest rates, and, and perhaps 
perhaps shift their guidance on that. And uh, and because of that, we may, and, and particularly in light of the incredibly strong job growth in the United States, putting more pressure on them to start to become more hoggish or start to move back to being neutral or raise interest rates sooner, that uh, that we could end up seeing a uh, quite a bit of uh, interest and uh, and action come out of the uh, of the U.S. Federal Reserve meeting, which is in the third week of December this year. It's not uh, it's not the week of the eighth. It's during the week of the fifteenth. The uh, the final thing is that for three of the uh, the Fed members that are uh, our regional Fed presidents that have been hawkish, there this is their last stand because they rotate off. So if the hawks are going to do anything to try and push their agenda, this looks like now it may be the key meeting to do it. So what does that mean? It means that we may continue to see the U.S. dollar climb uh, during this week. It's had a major breakout on Friday uh, against pretty much everything, and it's been pushing other currencies down. This this advance may continue through the week on on speculation of the Fed, so that could weigh on commodities, particularly crude oil, and uh, and also it could. Uh, could weigh on some of the other currencies, as we have seen uh, seen weakness. Uh, in that environment, we'll turn now to uh, Asia Pacific, where the focus is really on uh, this week, and and it, it kicks off. It's likely to kick off right away as soon as uh, as soon as markets reopen, for two reasons. First of all, we have the potential for a catch-up rally, as often happens if uh, U.S. non-farm payrolls come out after Asia Pacific markets close for the week. Oftentimes, if you do get a big move in the U.S. or Europe off of non-farm payrolls, that tends to kick off the week in Asia Pacific. Plus, it's a busy week for China, and uh, and first thing, we're supposed to get the Chinese trade balance, which also could have an impact on markets sensitive to China, not just the Chinese indices, but also Australia indices, and uh, and the Australia Kiwi dollars, and and also the price of copper. So those are the markets that we're likely to see active this week off of China news. And, and China news comes out throughout the week. It starts with trade, then we move into inflation, and later in the week we get the retail sales and industrial production. To, uh, interestingly, while I was showing uh, a couple of minutes ago how clients have been net short, particularly into European indices, we're actually seeing that uh, Asia-Pacific industries, uh, it's a little bit different story. We're actually seeing clients net long there. We look here at the uh, the Hang Seng or the Hong Kong 43. We can see, in fact, that we actually have client, top clients 91% net long on the, on the Hong Kong right now. And if we bring up the Australia... As uh, as another example here, 83% clients are net long. These these indices have not come up as much as the U.S. indices. There is room for them to rebound, and uh, and as such, we're seeing that people have actually taken some long positions in these. The uh, the one that has moved has been the the uh, the Nikkei, and here the sentiment's been a little bit more mixed. We see that uh, in terms of number of clients, the the number of clients is actually net long, but the people that are against the Nikkei really seem to hate it because they've gone a small number of people have gone very very big in terms of short positions against the Nikkei uh, this week. In terms of Japan, there's not a lot of specific economic news coming out, but uh, we are in the middle of an election campaign in Japan, and uh, with with the uh, the votes scheduled for uh, for mid-month, the 14th, 15th, to kick off next week. So uh, with the campaign underway, we could still see some volatility in Japanese markets as well. So uh, and one final thing I wanted to note on, on client sentiment is uh, is this one here, the uh, the U.S. dollar yen. With the uh, U.S. dollar uh, spiking, the uh, dollar yen has has gone up. The yen has dropped. It's been up around 121, new uh, new major multi-year highs. And look at this, we're actually seeing that clients are still a net long on the dollar yen. Although we do see uh, t um, here top clients going from 83 to 70. There has been some profit taking as we've seen this big spike up to uh, up to 121. Not a huge amount, but something to keep an eye on as we move into the new week. So I'm going to highlight now some of the trading action that's possible in uh, in, in, in charts in in some of our markets. So I'm going to start with the Asia Pacific indices. We'll look at first at the uh, Hong Kong. Which, uh, as I noted, has seen uh, clients start taking a, a fairly significant net long position. We're not way up at the summer highs. We're still well short of it, and uh, and yet we are in a bit of an uptrend. We're moving out in this uh, channel here, which is uh, between two Fibonacci levels, between 23,230, 24,360, and the 24,000 level is in around here. We are seeing it start try to peak back above 24,000 uh, once again. The uh, the momentum's basically been sideways for the last six weeks, but it's been a, a consolidation within essentially an emerging uptrend of higher lows here. So there is some potential for the uh, Hong Kong market 
to continue working its way uh, upward. We'll also, but this this is dependent on what happens with uh, with the China news as the week progresses. If uh, if the China data comes in soft, then uh, then clearly the uh, we could see the uh, markets take a turn. Interestingly, this is the China A50, and look at this, just absolutely exploding. This is where we've seen the reaction to the uh, People's Bank of China interest rate cut and uh, and speculation that more stimulus could be on the way. Now we've seen it go up, 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 up. This is almost a doji here, and this is a pretty wide uh, range with some fairly long tails, and we're getting pretty overbought on the uh, on the RSI here on the China A, which means if the China data, any of the China data this week's disappoints, we could see this index take a pretty significant tumble because it has had a pretty strong rally. This is almost going parabolic here, and uh, and based on that, and with this uh, this wild swing, suggests that the bulls might be starting to lose control of the market, and that the bears may be coming in, and we may see so we could see some pretty heavy volatility in this index over the course of the next week. The uh, last one I'll look at is the uh, Australia 200, which uh, has been pretty choppy, but overall it's been in the downtrend. It's trying to stabilize here in this 5300 to 5400 range. This is 5385 here, this Fibonacci level, this Fibonacci support here around 5328. Uh, if we break out next, there's uh, next Fibonacci is about 5428 and then 5453. So uh, we are seeing here the uh, RSI is still under 50, so the momentum is still pointing downward, but it is stabilizing. It does look as though some of the downward pressure against the Aussie is easing, but uh, it depends on what happens with the China data this week. Good China data help boost the market. A poor China data could means that it may, uh, may continue to go sideways or could even drift lower. If we turn now to the uh, the currency side, I'm going to start with the uh, US dollar yen, which has been has had a, a huge amount of action on, uh, on Friday heading into the weekend here. Look at this, just another big explosion to the upside here it's been a very very strong dominating uptrend and uh, and now it's blown through 120 and kept right on going it's blown through some of the measured moves that were in and around 120 rsi is way overbought but uh, the trend in the rsi is still favorable so at this point upward momentum is still building in this where it's as we say around and around she goes and where she'll stop nobody knows it's it's a hard one to uh, to pick where this thing's going to go because it's moved up so quickly so fast at, uh, but at some point, you could see a correction or you see, could see it go sideways. But certainly, I think the one thing we will see is that it's, it's likely to continue to remain quite active. As we move up our, uh, our Fibonacci levels here, we'll, uh, on both uh, the longer and the shorter term, we'll see that the first support now is coming up to around 117.60, really. There's 119.25. And... Uh, and it's continuing to climb, so we'll see what happens here. But uh, certainly, if the uh, if the poll suggests that uh, that, uh, that Premier Abe is uh, is likely to win, then and get a renewed mandate for more reform, more stimulus could uh, could continue to drag uh, uh, keep this uh, this pair supported and drag on the yen. On uh, on that basis, also take a quick look here at uh, at euro yen, with uh, I'm sorry, there we are, euro yen. And euro yen, look at this, is also exploding to the upside today. So really broad-based weakness in the yen as we start to move into the uh, election campaign. And this is even with the supposedly uh, getting ready to stimulate ECB that's been weighing on the euro. And the euro's been going down, but the yen's going down even faster. We do have a bit of a negative divergence here. We are seeing it over, getting a little bit overbought. Possible correction. Maybe it runs into some resistance in around this 150 round number. But uh, but for the moment, the general trend uh, remains upward again with uh, with yen weakening. So uh, that covers our uh, our Asia Pacific markets. I just wanted to take a quick highlight of, uh, or sorry, actually before I do, that's not true. I wanted to do Aussie dollar and Kiwi dollar. We'll start with uh, the New Zealand dollar, and uh, the reason is we do have an RBNZ decision this week, and uh, and what are we seeing heading into this? We're seeing it under more pressure. It's an interesting one here. I'm trying to figure out is this a reverse head and shoulders base with a shoulder here, a head here, and a shoulder here. Or is this just a, uh, a consolidation pattern before another down leg? We're still, anytime it gets anywhere between sniffing distance of, uh, of 80 and really above 79.20, just gets knocked straight back down. So the, and the concern heading into the RBNZ meeting is, is the, is the central bank going to uh, continue?
continue trying to talk the dollar down. The RBA is continuing to talk their dollar down. Is the RBNZ going to do the same thing? Even though they're not intervening, they may still speak out against the dollar. And if that's the case, it could keep the pressure on heading into this. And uh, and I guess the other question is, is a head and shoulders bottom, a triple bottom, or getting ready for a breakdown? If we look here on the uh, RSI, we're seeing it's rolling over hard, but it's not oversold. So this suggests downward pressure accelerating. So there's still some potential uh, room for weakness here. This is uh, this low 7660. I've been calling it a 77 to 80 channel. And uh, if we did see a, a breakdown, particularly of the 7660, 75 could get tested pretty readily here because the measured moves would uh, would point you down uh, t more towards uh, 74, 73 and a half. So we've uh, there is potential for weakness should this uh, this bottom not hold here. And if it does, you do have a rebound within the channel. Nobody seems to be trying to challenge the uh, dare the RBNZ to intervene again and push this above 80 at this point in time. And uh, we'll look at the uh, Aussie dollar as well because it'll be a uh, it could also be active on top of uh, on Australian news. There's uh, Australian employment comes out this week, and also on news that comes out of China and any action that we see in commodity markets based on this. We're seeing on Friday with the U.S. dollar strength, Aussie is actually breaking down here. On Thursday, it took out 84. It's remained below it and continued to trend lower. It is getting oversold, but at this point, the trend is uh, momentum trend is still intact. So uh, we could see it continue to work its way lower. There was an 88.50 to uh, 85, let's call it 85.50 here, measuring you down three points uh, to around 82.50 as a, as a measured move. The uh, This thing is just still basically under pressure. Uh, if we got some good news out of China, if we got some good news out of Australia, may help the Australian dollar to stabilize. But, uh, but some of this weakness has also been pretty consistent after the RBA uh, decided to continue talking the dollar down. There's one, two, three, four straight negative days after the RBA meeting. So uh, another thing so could it get over so may still be a bit more weakness at some point could get oversold maybe get a trading bounce but it's hard to say if, the, if we're at that point yet or not so having taken a look at uh, at Asia Pacific markets where we really expect most of the action this week to be focused we'll take a quick look at some of the key markets in North America and Europe in particular I want to start with the DAX the uh, the Germany 30 here has just had an unbelievable run and uh, and it boggles my mind because the uh, the U.S. when when the U.S. is having an incredibly strong economy and and the Fed's looking at tightening and here Germany's weak and the ECB's talking tightening but the truth of the matter is in the last six months they've done nothing through all that time that they've been talking about stimulating and talking about talking about asset purchases the ECB, ECB balance sheet has continued to shrink as people pay back their old uh, LTRO loans off and uh, and so really the question is what are they going to do they've really got to aggressively step up and if they can't then uh, then they've got a real problem but I, I think it's starting to become a, an issue now where they just keep talking and talking and not really doing much but look at this huge bullish engulfing candle for the DAX it's overbought but but so far a very strong new all-time high for the uh, the currency in the hope that the ECB will finally get up and actually do something. We'll see if that uh, that actually happens or not. Uh, if it doesn't, then we start to see speculation go back the other way. This could be vulnerable. And uh, and as I noted on the client sentiment, people have been uh, shorting into this rally. So uh, the question is now, will the shorts get squeezed and push this thing higher, or will they have their day and see this thing roll over? Uh, at, at this point, I, I think at some point you're going to see it topple back because it's uh, it's uh, because of the underlying fundamentals for Germany haven't been that strong. The uh, next one I wanted to uh, highlight here is the UK 100. The UK 100 is a little different from the DAX, and uh, and one of the reasons is it's got a little more of a weighting, higher weighting in energy and materials, and those are sectors that have been struggling with the uh, price of gold and the price of oil coming down. So while the the, the DAX kept on going and blasted up to uh, to new all to here to to its all time highs, the FTSE has stalled short, and we are seeing it kind of in uh, in consolidation mode. As I showed in the client sentiment, people. Have been to, haven't been really believing this rally. I'll, uh, I'll just highlight briefly uh, U.S. markets. The, the big question we have about the U.S. market this week is, for stocks, is what is it going to take 
to uh, to push them any higher because there's no more news coming out. There's no economic news. There's no corporate news. There's not much of anything this week. But uh, still, we've got the uh, here we've got the Dow having broken out to an all-time high. Would not surprise me at all to see it touch eight, try uh, t- try eighteen thousand, the round number, maybe push a little bit through. We are seeing RSI is getting pretty overbought. A little bit of a negative divergence here. At some point, this is due for a pause or a correction. We'll see when. And um, just wanted to highlight here briefly the main commodity markets. We have uh, crude oil. I'll uh, take a quick peek here at WTI. It's still in a downtrend. People are with not only is uh, is the concerns about the price war with uh, or or supply war over market share with Saudi Arabia continuing. And on on top of this, we've got the U.S. dollar rallying. That's not that's always puts pressure. Often puts pressure on the uh, the price of crude oil and as struggling demand in Europe. Even though the uh, even though the ECB keeps talking uh, talking stimulus, the truth of the matter is, if you look at the currency markets and you look at the commodity markets, people aren't believing them. The only ones that seem to be believing them are the stock markets at this point in time. The uh, so this is still in a uh, in a downtrend here, which could uh, hold back some of the uh, indices such as the UK. Care Canada that are a little more sensitive to crude oil. Uh, also, take a quick peek here at gold. Gold, I think, could struggle again this week. It had a uh, it had a pretty good run here, particularly one good day, kind of consolidated. But now it's starting to roll over here, breaking back under 12. RSI is breaking back under 50. Uh, as I said, the um, ECB balance sheet likely to shrink this week. Uh, ECB was saying that they're not they didn't even they're not considering gold as part of their asset purchase program. They lost the Swiss referendum. The only thing gold's got going for it was India got rid of its import control so that could boost demand in wedding season, but that all got factored in here a lot of that on Monday. Now we're starting to see it slump back, so we could see some weakness in gold. Support in at around 1175 and this big support level here is in this 1135 to 1150 zone is the more uh, more significant support for gold. I'll just uh, finish here quickly with uh, Canadian dollar. The uh, Canadian dollar was a, has been very interesting action this week. Uh, it did go down on Friday, but uh, amazingly enough, of the the major currencies, the Canadian dollar is the one that went down the least. And if this were to tighten up a little, you could almost make a case for this being a hammer here and uh, and creating a double bottom for CAD uh, U.S. dollar here in and around 87.20, with initial resistance up around 88.20, and then closer to 89. And uh, and why? Because even though the Canadian jobs declined, they were coming off of two huge months of retrenchment was normal and all of the decline was in part-time jobs so the street actually is taking a soft employment report in stride that's actually a good thing because that suggests that the loonie is probably getting pretty washed out here similarly crude oil has been going down 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 and the loonie starting to stabilize again the uh, that's we're starting to see some washout there was talk from the bank of canada that uh, that exports have started to pick up that uh, that the economy is continuing to improve so that could supri- provide some support for the loonie uh, as we move forward so we are in a bit of an in-between week in terms of North American and European markets, but there's still a lot of rooms for speculation. There's still a lot of news coming out from Asia-Pacific markets. We could still see significant action, not only in Asia-Pacific markets, but also in uh, in commodities and as we push that through into currencies. So it looks like we still could have uh, an active week with uh, looking ahead to the following week and the Fed meeting.